Um, okay, so um, thanks for your patience. The thing is a bit like there's different schedules out there, so I'm starting somewhere in the middle. <laughs> um, I'm Andre. I'm a bug wrangler at the Wikimedia Foundation. So um, this is an introduction to a tool called Fabricator, where we manage bug reports, feature requests, uh, some other things related to software development, but not only. Um, who, who of you has seen Fabricator before? Hands up, please. OK. That's not too many. Great. Um, so th this talk is basically giving a basic introduction. What, what is Fabricator? What does it do? Uh, how is it used? especially when it comes to planning software development, uh, how it could be useful for you. Um, again, I'm probably going to bomb you with, with, with quite some content here. Um, I hope to, to, that it's not going to be too much. Um, happy to take uh, questions, um, but uh, Rachel Farrand and I, we also plan to have another session specifically about uh, yeah, basically hands-on help. If, if you need specific help with Fabricator, uh, but we can just basically look over your shoulder. Uh, but also happy to take some questions here if the time allows. Um, so to explain where, where we're coming from when it comes to organization and, and, and social things, um, as this is a hackathon, this is mostly focusing on uh, technical collaboration or uh, technical contributions. And for that, developers need tools. So there's, of course, communication, like on mailing lists, on IRC chats, on wiki pages about plans. Uh, there are code repositories, um, like MediaWiki core extensions, uh, that you can check out and change the code and put it into a code review tool. Um, and there's also the planning process uh, about, for example, bugs or features. Uh, that has to happen somewhere. So you probably want to have a tool that allows you to, to say this bug to fix it, it's more urgent or more important than another bug to fix. Um, or also to plan who's doing what in a team if you're working on a software project with one or two other people and simply to organize work a bit. And um, for that, uh, we're using nowadays in Wikimedia a tool called Fabricator. Um, right now, it's really only about feature requests, bug reports, and some teams and chapters are also using it for their non-software related things. So it's also a general uh, project management tool. And, but in the long run, when it comes to the software aspect, uh, we also want to move um, code review uh, to a certain part in Fabricator, but that's going to happen next year. So we want to get rid of that tool called Garrett. Um, and uh, if you're just in your web browser and want to take a quick look into a code repository of a project, um, which is currently on git.wikimedia.org if you open your browser, uh, that's what we plan to move in the next one or two weeks entirely into Fabricator 2. So, um, Fabri Fabricator is a, a pretty powerful tool. Um, and not only ab about uh, maintaining tasks or things like that, but I hope I can show a little bit of that. Uh, wh what's also there to keep in mind is uh, it's, it's a tool for collaboration. So you have different roles, different stakeholders. You have developers, uh, product managers. You have users, which could be editors or authors, uh, or just readers who see uh, the, the software misbehaving and then can uh, report a bug report and create that one so a developer can take a look. Um, so what, what I'm showing here is uh, the central page we have on MediaWiki.org about Fabricator. It's basically just an overview page about the tool. Um, there's the link to the help and the FAQ. Um, we created this help about this help page about two years ago when we were slowly planning the migration to Fabricator because we used something different before. And uh, this, this covers a few things uh, already like creating your account, uh, dealing with notifications, uh, project management, uh, all these things are linked from there. 
And this is the front page of Fabricator when you are not logged in. Um, so what you see here is uh, also a few links that could be helpful, reporting a problem, uh, what happens after reporting. Um, and on the left side, uh, you see that Fabricator consists of different tools. The first one you see uh, here is differential. We're not using that yet for reviewing code because we're still using Garrett. But what I'm mostly going to focus on here is what is called manifest, which is about maintaining tasks, which could be any kind of uh, defined work that is planned, whether it's fixing a bug, creating a feature request, or other things like that. Um, so this looks slightly different because of the zoom. I, I hope this still is readable. Um, but if I move in or uh, make it bigger, there is a login here. And if you scroll down, there's login or register, uh, that button. And if you go there, uh, you end up on uh, MediaWiki.org, where you just enter your usual username and your password, and you log in and, uh, via OAuth. Um, you don't need a separate password for Fabricator. So um, it now basically asks me um, to allow access to Fabricator, and then I'm logged in and go back on Fabricator automatically with my MediaWiki.org account, and now I'm logged in. Um, which, again, is... I should probably leave it at the Zoom level. Uh, so be because here in the corner now you can see uh, there's more buttons, and you can also see your own... Uh, avatar that you set. Um, so log in, you don't need a separate password. And um, basically the, the three things I, I want to cover here is um, finding stuff that interests you, that you might want to work on uh, if you're a developer. Um, following things, like you don't need to be a developer for that. Just For example, there's this one software misbehavior bug that always annoyed you, so you maybe want to get a notification when it's fixed or when somebody works on it, or a developer maybe has more questions to reproduce. So to follow either certain tasks uh, or even entire projects, if you're interested in the progress there. Um, and to also file uh, your own whatever bug reports or feature requests and to do these things. Um, so, so, for example, when, when you imagine um, that you are uh, on Commons, Wikimedia Commons, and there's a thumbnail, a small version of, of an image not displayed correctly or, or not displayed at all, uh, you might want to check in Fabricator if there is already a bug report. So um, there's a search up there in the upper corner, uh, and I could enter now thumbnail here if I don't misspell it. Um, but one thing I, I need to say here is we're now on the top level of Fabricator. And I already told you, like, there's, there's more tools in there. So if I search here now, um, I basically have, have a global search in Fabricator and not only about bug reports. Um, so you see some, some tasks or bug reports listed here, also closed ones, for example, which might not interest you if you're, still, uh, if you're looking for a bug that's still open and not solved yet. Um, but you also get results of uh, code commits, because that, that's already integrated here. Um, so this is, this is the global sh search. Um, and you can, if you go here into manifest, uh, which is the tool for tasks. Um, you have some, some uh, queries here on, on the side. Some of them are, are defaults, like, for example, uh, tasks that are assigned to you that you yourself plan to work on and to fix, uh, tasks that you've created yourself, that you reported as a bug reporter. And um, down here, you have advanced search, um, and that one is, is pretty often the one you want, actually, because uh, it, it offers you a lot of options here. So I would now enter, it contains words, uh, thumbnail, 
And I was also interested in tasks that are still open and, and not resolved yet, not fixed yet. So I'm also going to use a status here. Um, so I'm going to select uh, open here. And to show a few more things, um, you see several other options here, but, but I'm also going to show them in, in a task itself, because it's the same what you have in tasks. Uh, fields to, to express how urgent things are ho or who is supposed to work on things. Uh, and now if I click search, I should get a list of results. Yes. And there's actually many, because <laughs> there's many thumbnail problems. Uh, yes? These are only tasks that are open, yeah. If, if, if I scroll up, um, you see, again, the search criteria you just entered. So the, the status is, is only open ones that are not uh, solved either by, by fixing the bug, uh, by changing the code to make the code work properly, or you can also um, close a task by, for example, saying, we are not going to fix this, or we could not reproduce this anymore. So, because there, there's also other reasons why a task could be closed. It doesn't always have to be a, a fix that really solved the problem in the code base. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, you see, you see a, a lot of results here. Um, and you see the name of the task, the summary actually. And you already see here some, some small uh, project names. So uh, let's just go to this task, maybe. Um, this is the task view. So um, you see here the summary. Um, you see it is open. There's the status here. Um, but nobody yet has uh, said how urgent this task is. That's why it says still needs triage. Um, obviously, it's public uh, because we also have some projects, for example, by chapters that want to plan or manage internal things that shouldn't be public. That's why we also uh, have private tasks. Uh, you see a description here. Um, actually, a pretty good one. Uh, and on the side, uh, you see the projects or tags uh, that are associated to this task. So a task can have zero projects. It can also have five or six projects or, or whatever, unlimited number. Um, this, this is to allow projects to organize their work. Because um, this, this task, if, if, I, if you now search for project, uh, if you search for tasks in, for example, services team, or in the REST base, code base, um, this task will show up in both of them. And that's the idea behind associ associating uh, tags or projects with tasks. Um, then you can follow this specific task. Uh, so this one has 13 people actually getting notifications about changes in this task. And there's also notification settings about that uh, that I'm going to show later. And um, here you see who wrote this task originally and also who, is, who plans uh, to work on this, which is the assignee. So this is the person responsible at some point to close this task. Um, you have a few options here, what you, what you can do with this task. Um, for example, now if I click Edit Task here, um, you see I can change the title, I could set the priority to whatever, uh, something high, for example, but I won't do that because I'm not part of that team and I don't want to interfere. Um, I could also remove the assignee if I myself plan to work on that. Uh, so you see here the drop-down with which offers um, usernames. Uh, remove or add some other projects. Um, these are the things basically you can do here. I'm not going to click Save Changes, obviously. <laughs> because I don't want to mess um, with the tasks, uh, with that task. Um, and if you think you, you have something to add here uh, to this task, you can uh, 
add a comment here. Um, obviously, I, I, don't, I don't have a good example now what to add here. But you can see down here already a preview of, of your comment. So, um, for, for example, if there is a task which uh, still requires better steps to reproduce, like the developer could not reproduce the bug report yet, you might want to add a comment, I could just reproduce this with this browser on this platform, I went to this link URL, I clicked edit, and then if you scroll down, you see this, like, like good steps to reproduce. Um, which is also very welcome when, when you uh, create bug reports here. Um, as I said, Fabricator is pretty powerful. So um, of course, it can happen that people report the same problem again. So uh, if, you, if you're aware of a duplicate, uh, you can merge that duplicate onto that original task. So the discussion about the problem happens in one single place instead of two places. And um, you can also define blocked by tasks. So uh, if I scroll down here, uh, you can see this task cannot be worked on because it's still blocked by uh, another task, which has to be completed or fixed first. And it was also blocked on another task, but you can see up there uh, in that pop-up that one is already closed, resolved, plus uh, you see it strike out. So you can. Um, define dependencies between tasks. This one has to happen first, and only when that one has been solved, uh, anybody can work on this task. There is, uh, the question is if, if you can basically close a task that is blocked by another task. Yeah. Uh, you could, there is no logic in the, in the program code that blocks you from doing that. Um, you can, um, but probably you would want to edit then uh, the, the blocked by tasks here. So I could then go here and um, remove one of these tasks basically, if you realize it's not really a dependency. Um, and if I'm interested here in uh, the progress on this specific task, uh, I can subscribe to it. So uh, you see here the current list of subscribers. There are like 14 people, or 13, yeah, 13. And if I click subscribe, uh, the page will reload, and my name is now also listed there. So if you're interested in the progress of a specific task, uh, you can subscribe to that one, and then you get notifications. Uh, there are notification, yeah? Um, the notification is sent by the mail? Um, there, there are two options. There, there are uh, settings for your notifications uh, in your preferences. Um, let me go there. Uh, so these, these are the settings, your personal settings. And um, you can see on the side uh, something called email preferences. And uh, here there's a lot of options, actually, <laughs> because uh, Fabricator can also create a lot of notifications. Um, but basically, you have two options. You can get emails, or you can get uh, notifications here in the web UI up here. So um, these are my notifications I get in the web UI. I know some developers who prefer the web UI. I know some developers who work more like email-based when it comes to notifications. But this is pretty much up to you. And um, more information is on the Fabricator slash help page on, on MediaWiki.org, too. So I want to show how to create a task. Uh, well, right now I'm already in manifest uh, be because I clicked there on the left uh, five minutes ago. So I already have here a create task drop down, But uh, you always have that plus up here. Um, so I can go to create a task, and there you're going to see the same fields again, basically. Uh, you have a link here, um, how to write a good bug report. Because if you've never done that, it's very welcome that you take a quick look. What basically providing good steps to reproduce in a list 
what you expected to happen and what happened instead. These are the basics. And maybe telling uh, the developers, can you reproduce it, things like that. Um, and of course, we, we, we also asked uh, if you report something that's security related in a technology context, uh, please use a different form because then it's not visible to the world. Because by default, any task you create here will be visible to everybody. Um, and here you see the same, like uh, entering a title, like for example, uh, thumbnail on commons does not render. Um, you leave the assignee empty if you haven't talked yet to a developer before who said like, oh yeah, I, I, I'm going to take a look at it, I'm going to work at it, because um, you're going to add project tags here. Um, there's probably none related to thumbnails. Yeah, otherwise you, you would get a proposal now. And that's sometimes a bit tricky. So um, there's a search here, and I should probably scroll up for the camera, sorry. Uh, the tags field for projects here, but there's nothing with thumbnail, otherwise you would now get proposals. So uh, I'm going to use the search here, uh, which lists uh, all projects. And this could maybe something like file management, if I don't misspell. So I could add uh, file management here. Uh, there's, I think, also media storage. Yeah. These, these could be the ones uh, related. And then this task end up in, that, in those projects, in these two projects. And the developers look at the tasks in a project, developers working on either file management or media storage, and uh, will take a look at some point. Um, if you're not sure about which project to enter here, it's also fine. There's people triaging. Actually, that's my main job, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, taking a look at bug reports and putting the right projects or associating the right ones and, and uh, helping developers to find what's, what's going wrong and what to work on. Um, and of course, a description, which should have nice steps to reproduce uh, what you expected to happen and then what actually happened. Um, and then um, you're going to see exactly a task uh, after submitting this, like this one. Um, and it's visible to the world, and uh, it's in those associated projects that you just added as tags. Um, so this was basically searching for tasks in Fabricator and how a task looks like in Fabricator and how to create a new task. Um, the third aspect is third, fourth, <laughs> um, project management. Uh, as I said, there's, there's five projects here associated to this task. And um, I'm just going to go to Parsoid now. Let's take this one. I clicked it. And um, you end up in a view. I should probably zoom out a little bit here. Um, you end up on something that's called a work board. Uh, and this is used by members of a project to organize their work. Uh, so all these small cards you see here uh, are actually the tasks. If, if I click here again, I end up in a task view again. Um, so every card here represents a task, and you can also see like the other projects apart from Parsoid, where we are right now. You can see them listed here. Um, and for some tasks, you can also see assignees. For example, here, uh, Santosh is supposed to work on this task. So you get lots of the information you see in, in, the, in the task view you already get on the project board. Um, and you see the main thing here are you have columns. So uh, for every project, you can define columns. And um, we have some recommendations about that on MediaWiki.org, which is called Fabricator slash Project Management, um, where, where there's some examples uh, how to use columns and then typical uses of workboards like de depending on which project you have or which kind of development style you have. For example, if you do Scrum or Kanban or things like that. But it's pretty much, or it's really up to, to the team or the maintainers of a project uh, how the workboard should look like. So Parsoid here, 
They have some non-parasite tasks, obviously. Uh, they plan what to work on next, but they're not working on it yet. And um, they also list here what's, what's in progress, what's already being worked on. And you can see here how, how the team can organize their work by uh, drag and drop, because this is still next up, but if I was in that team and now I'm working on it, I can click on it and drag this card or this task uh, to a different column. And that's pretty useful if you want to know what your coworkers are working on. I'm not going to do it right now. Uh, to see what, what, what the progress is in general in that team or that project. Um, so this is a pretty helpful one. Oh, good question. What, what the numbers are, yeah. Um, the numbers are, um, this is eight here. So because there are eight tasks, open tasks, uh, on this project board here. Um, I'm not 100% sure what, what the zero is or the 44. Because in, in, some, in some software development uh, models, you can assign story points to, to certain tasks or, or stories. Um, and for example, how, how long they're going to take. Uh, so these, these are concepts of, of software management. Uh, this is probably covered on the project management page. Um, I'll just search for story points. Yeah, OK. Yeah. So I don't know everything either, <laughs> especially because I'm not really in project management. I just try to maintain, uh, fabricate a little bit or co-maintain. Um, plus do the basic triage, but I'm, I'm not really part of, of project management when it comes to this. But uh, yeah, the first number is the, the total number of tasks in that column, and uh, the, ah, the total number of story points assigned, I see. So this is a tool used by, by some uh, teams to basically plan how long a task is going to take, but not how urgent it is, because that would be the priority field. Um, another thing here is um, you have another option here, uh, how you want to sort. C currently, you, I, can, I can also, within a column, I can, I can drag a card like up or down to change the order. Um, and the small color here, um, which is red, orange, or goes into blue, this, this actually describes the priority again. Uh, I can't always remember that either. <laughs> So you can also sort here by priority to basically list those tasks that are more urgent or more important uh, first. So this just changes here. And by default, you only see the open tasks, because that's a view or stuff you might want to work on or see how the progress is going. But of course, you can also change to all tasks or uh, tasks assigned to me, which would be empty here now because I'm not part of that team. Um, but you can filter the view, or you can, if you use advanced filter, you again will end up with this search form that you've already seen before in the advanced search, uh, where you could come up with uh, whatever. For example, if it's also in, in a certain other project, uh, if a task is also a member of a certain other project. And, and another example, this is the workboard of uh, the team called uh, Developer Relations uh, in the Wikimedia Foundation. Actually, it's a sub-team, but uh, this, this is uh, a team I'm part of. So this is how, how we organize our work. Uh, we have a backlog, something we just want to check from time to time, but we are not actively working on ourselves, so that's why it's called Team Radar. Um, and then we have things here. Um, we plan by quarter, for example. That's another option. And you see the small icon here in front of it. Um, and, if I, and you also see that uh, actually this is a link. Um, so you, you see the tasks here for this quarter, for example, uh, Wikimania hackathon sessions that members of my team plan to run. Um, but if I click here now, this is a sub-project. That's why it's a link. And there's also sub-projects or milestones available. So you, you have another way to organize your work. And if I click here, I again have a board. Um, and here, um, we basically uh, organize our work by month again. And the advantage simply is um, we can have a better tracking here. 
per month, uh, while we still have on, on the main board, which is developer relations and not the sub-project which we have for April to June, we still have an overview of all our tasks, uh, which are not only in this quarter. Um, so this is basically the, the project management part. Any questions? Do I confuse you too much or something? Or is, yeah? Uh, can you connect it to time? Like, for example, can you give a task, for example, five days to be done or something like that? Um, if you can connect a task to, to time. So there is no due date or deadline field explicitly. Uh, there is not. Uh, I've, I've heard the request before. So uh, we could, in theory, add a custom field for that, but I haven't seen enough requests for that yet. Let's put it like this. Because it's always a trade of how many fields do you want to put into your user interface. Um, so it's, yeah, that's why I'm sometimes reluctant and ask people, if, if there's enough developer teams or developers requesting it, uh, we could do it. But right now, what I pretty often see is that you put it into, at the beginning of a summary, you, you put the date, basically. That's, so far, what I've seen. Hmm? Oh, that, that was also your question. Okay, I see. <laughs> okay. Organizational structure. That's, that's a good question, yeah. Um, I love to point to, to, to the project management page for that because uh, th this is an area where, uh, at least within the Wikimedia Foundation, there's a team practices group. Um, and I'm kind of co-maintaining this page a little bit, but um, it's, it's more like their area. So there's a section called parent projects, sub-projects, and milestones. Um, and this basically explains a bit uh, the advantages of, uh, yeah, search, searching in, in certain projects, um, how the behavior is uh, when it comes to membership of projects, which is another thing I need to show in two minutes, um, and uh, what advantages you, you might have from that. So in, in a classical software context, for example, if you want to release a new version, you might have a sub-project or milestone for that specific version, version, and you move all the tasks in there on your workboard that should be fixed in that version. And then again, you could click on that sub-project on the workboard, and there have a more fine-grained planning, basically, when does what happen in next weeks before this specific release. Yeah, it, 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 yeah. In in, in non-software uh, context, so for example, um, last year um, the um, Wikimedia Developer Summit, uh, I found it interesting that the workboard for for that uh, was um, the columns were basically the rooms. So it was assigning by the size of the rooms and dragging the cards there. You, use, you can use these columns for many things. You can track progress within your team, but uh, you, you can be very creative when it comes to that. So, so you could categorize on, on a workboard either by uh, some logistics for a hackathon, for example, but you could also uh, categorize then by, by time shifts or by, by months or things like that. So um, yeah, this, this is pretty much open to, to the maintainers of a project or who's running a project. Uh, and there's only some recommendations and guidelines on, on the project management page. But in the end, it's pretty much up to you, like what works best for you. And we've also, I've also seen teams like changing their, their concepts over time or moving to two different concepts. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm curious now, so um, I'm again going to go to the front page, going to go to manifest here on the left side, and then again go to the advanced search, and you said upgrade to Jesse? Jesse. Yeah, so the Debian version, okay. Um, I'm wondering if it's a task or a project, so um, 
I'll just enter this here under contains words. Ah, and I, I should filter. Sorry? Um, I, I think it's a task, actually. Um, and if I want to find it now, I should probably also search for open ones only, uh, because otherwise there, there's too many listed. Um, there's still a lot. <laughs> there, so so um, there, this is, this is uh, operations area. Uh, when, when, it comes, when it comes to the organization of teams, uh, there's, for example, a project here called Operations, which is a team project. So, so it's probably under operations. Uh, there's obviously here certain tasks for certain servers. Um, but again, there, there's different types of projects. So there's one project here, for example, uh, which is also under operations, but it's an operations project to, uh, for a new data center. Um, so it might be there somewhere, yeah. Uh, but again, there, there's many ways to, to organize your work here. And, and many kinds of work you can organize here. No, it wasn't here to me that the, the operation is too. Ah, OK. Yeah, yeah, it's operations. This, this area is mostly operations, exactly. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, following uh, stuff you're interested in. Uh, so we already saw like subscribing to a specific task, uh, how you do that and get notifications. Um, but here you, you also see uh, on the left there's something called members. Um, and if you go there, um, you can either join the project or watch the project, uh, which is a slight difference when it... Uh, I should actually try it. <laughs> because because this, this behavior in the software changed again in the last month, so... Um, I could add myself here by clicking Watch Project. And um, it says, you will receive email and notifications about changes to every object, in this context, task, uh, with projects you watch, and also sub-projects and everything. So um, that's the option to watch a project. And if I add myself now, I'm, oh yeah, I'm not listed under Members, but I'm listed under Watchers now. Because membership is, doesn't necessarily imply that you want to follow all updates. You, you can also become a member of a project, of course. But as I'm here after um, following some updates of all tasks within that project, for example, if I'm just interested in what that team is doing, or I might want to join that team at some point, or it's just the area the team works on, uh, then this is a way to get actually a lot of notifications. That's why. I, uh, we had the notification settings beforehand uh, to filter a bit better. Um, so this is the second way to basically follow stuff you might be interested in here. Um, and the third way is uh, there's also a feature which is pretty comparable to the watch list in MediaWiki, and it's called flags here. So uh, this is unrelated to subscribing to these tasks or something, but it allows you to basically keep a list of uh, tasks you're interested in. And if I go back to uh, the front page now, um, I have flags here on the side because I forgot to remove it. It's not there by default, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, if you, if if you want to change the menu here and, for example, have flags here and use flags, uh, there's a customize menu button down here. And uh, you can change uh, what's shown here or move the order um, or add more projects. Um, but I want to go to flags now because I've obviously, my personal bookmarks here, I've flagged four tasks. Um, I should quickly remove this one again. So you're again in the task view, and the last option here is flag for later. That's how it's called. So I click this, and I can choose a random color, for example, pink. I can add a note to it that only I myself can see. You see now here uh, the option to remove the pink flag. 
But if I now go back again to um, what I flagged, you see it listed here and my comment. And the thing about these bookmarks is they're really private, so nobody else can see your list of bookmarks. Uh, that does, again, this doesn't mean you get notifications about this task. It's more like your own bookmark list that you can also manage if you're interested in certain things and you might want to check this list every other week or things like that. Uh, to which one? Um, I don't, I probably don't know GitHub well enough for that, um, <laughs> I have to admit. Um, I, I think it is, yeah. I think it, as far as I can say, yeah. Um, um, I don't know the exact like software development history of Fabricator itself be because it's it's not a tool that was developed within Wikimedia. Um, so so originally where Fabricator comes from, um, as far as I know, it was developed within Facebook, and um, some some that's it's also written in PHP actually. So uh, Fabricator, as MediaWiki is. And at some point, um, they made it a project on their own, uh, a spin-off, uh, unrelated to Facebook. Facebook still uses it, as far as I know. Um, but it's free software. Uh, we host it ourselves. That's why it's on .wikimedia.org. We maintain it ourselves. And every other week, um, we get the latest version, the latest code changes in Fabricator itself, in the Fabricator code base and deploy that uh, in our instance on Wikimedia work. Okay. Uh, but I don't know the exact history and what influenced like, this tool or how design decisions were taken at some point. And there's still a few things uh, changing, actually. So um, when, when you're in the task view, um, just as one example, the, the, the stuff you see here, uh, the, the tags or subscribers, two months ago, this was still uh, here in the main view on the left and this design changed. So it's still changing a lot. Uh, because the, the upstream maintainers or the developers of Fabricator itself, not in Wikimedia, they said it's more important uh, to see the actual description uh, first and maybe the tags down there. So it's still changing a lot. Um, that's basically the basics what I want to show. And I hope I haven't forgotten any, anything that's really important. Is there something you consider really important <laughs> that I forgot? <laughs> well, you might not know about it, yeah. But <laughs> um, what, what I again can say, like, um, it's, it's pretty powerful. For example, when it comes to notifications, um, there is, uh, when I go to the help page now, uh, another thing called Herald. Uh, so you can also create Herald rules for really specific custom notifications. Uh, it's, it's a more advanced, why does it go there? Okay, <laughs> it wasn't meant. Uh, it, it's, ah, I see, I should click follow this link. It's a more advanced option. Um, if you really want to like, when the task includes the words, whatever, thumbnail, then subscribe me to that task. So these things are possible. Um, Another thing, um, you can change the front page when you're logged in. So um, you, can, you can also have a completely custom front page here. You can define queries um, and dashboards. So uh, every box you see here is actually a panel. And this is just the, um, yeah, this, this is actually a customized front page, exactly, because I'm logged in here. Um, and uh, yeah, these, these, uh, these are custom panels uh, and I stole basically that page or took the page from uh, the reading web team in the foundation because that team, all members of that team share this front page. So they, everybody in that team set that front page in their own uh, preferences and they created these panels by um, saving a custom query, which is something, yes, I forgot. Um, and then displaying them here on the front page. 
Again, this is explained uh, in the help documentation if you're interested to already have your default uh, view when you go to Fabricator Wikimedia Org uh, to be not uh, the usual one. And that's probably why I left uh, the query results open here because I also wanted to show that. Um, you remember I searched for open tasks with, which contain the words uh, upgrade Jesse. And here's a button, save custom query. So I'm going to click that. Um, I'll give it a query name. Um, upgrade to Jesse. I'll save the query. And you earlier saw on the left being in manifest the, the task tool in Fabricator. You saw uh, the, the default queries like assigned or authored by myself. Um, and here, now you're in the view of your queries uh, that are saved on the side, on the left. And you see the one I just saved is the very first one. Um, that is intentional because uh, you could change the order here by drag and drop again, or even remove that query uh, that you've saved. But the thing is, if I now go to fabricator wikimedia org slash manifest, um, this will be the default query already displayed here now. So this is the query uh, upgrade to Jesse, which is now my default view. And um, what, what I have on, on my work account, because this is my private account, but on my work account, my default view I have when I go to manifest uh, is tasks assigned to myself. So in theory, the first thing in the morning uh, is I take a look at that list and uh, see what I'm supposed to work on. Um, this is, you, can, you can customize a lot of things uh, depending on your workflows. Um, what else is there to say? Um, there's other things like tokens and memes, which are more like fun things. Uh, you can check them out, but they don't, I think personally, I think they, they don't bring a lot of value. Um, there's, there's a tool where you can create pastes, like whatever, dropping some code or things like that, like paste bin. Uh, there, there's many things, and I should probably just let you ask questions now instead of telling you more. <laughs> What's the time? Okay. <laughs> um, so, was this useful as a first impression? The, the thing I always have is a little bit, uh, I want to explain filing tasks, following stuff you're interested in, finding stuff. Uh, but there's, for example, also these aspects of like, okay, there's project management, there's this workboard thing, there's the task views. Uh, in the future, next year, hopefully, there is also code review integrated. So if you're in a task view, there's going to be another field linking to a patch, a code change, proposed to fix that specific bug. So it's all going to be more integrated. At least that's the idea we have behind using Fabricator, uh, to have everything in one tool at some point. And um, there's, of course, also uh, yeah, the, the notifications part in, in different areas, like uh, using flags for your own bookmarks, following projects or watching projects, and subscribing to specific tasks. And uh, I hope that was somehow understandable. <laughs> Um, if not, or if you have any other questions, feel free to either ask them now, or uh, as I said, I hope I said earlier, we also, uh, Rachel and I, we also plan to have another really one-on-one -on -one session come to us with uh, the Fabricator website open and ask any questions, and we're happy to help. But the thing is, I need to make a cut somewhere, and I sometimes wonder myself where to make the cut. So I hope this was an okay-ish introduction for you. Um, thank you. <laughs> and again, if you have questions, feel free to come at any time or another session. Thank you. <laughs>